Do I just start whenever? Hi, I'm Blanchelle, and we're here at WNXP. I'm going back to him.
Hi, this is Emily Young, and we are live in our Sonic Cathedral. I am joined by Sabrina Teitelbaum, who performs as Blonde Shell. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for being here. We so Thanks appreciate it. Thanks for having it. me. Um, so you've been making music for a decade under, or so, under a lot of different names and monikers. Could you tell me a bit about how Blonde Shell came to fruition? Blonde Shell came to fruition in the pandemic. It was really like a finally I'm in isolation and nothing matters. So I'm just going to make the music that I want to make and nobody's going to hear it kind of a thing. So all the songs were songs that I was like, I'm not going to show this to anybody. And then somehow I decided to show them to everybody. Well, I have to say how much I enjoy playing I think my kink is when you tell me that you think I'm pretty on the radio. But obviously, <laughs> these lyrics are um, quite personal. How yeah. has it felt to kind of publicly be this vulnerable? Especially since you didn't think anyone would hear it. Well, it's fine with people that I don't know. That doesn't bother me. The thing that is difficult is, like, family and close friends. Because you have to then, like look at them and see them and talk to them and they bring up the music and you have to like justify it and explain it so that's been a challenge but also a growing experience yeah you have to be like yes that does say look me in the eye when I'm about to finish mom yeah which made me exceedingly uncomfortable <laughs> but then like I tried to block them on social media I tried to do the whole thing and I was like they're just they're going to hear it. But that kind of, I mean, that song specifically really skyrocketed you to the public eye, too. So there was really no hiding from that one. Yeah. It was like a weird, it was this this weird thing where I obviously want people to hear the music that I'm making. But I also was like, I don't know, I wouldn't hate it if if this didn't go anywhere with this song because then my family wouldn't hear it. That's the one. Yeah. Well, we definitely hear some like uh, there's very clearly some early aughts indie era influences, also some Britpop influences. Uh, can you tell us a bit about some of those musical um, inspirations and influences you've had in your life thus far? Yeah, I um, I listened to a lot of those early aughts and 90s records growing up and then I sort of like forgot about them for a long time. And when I was in that isolation period like right around the time that I wrote all these songs I saw I think it was Miley Cyrus covering doll parts so good and I was like I well I just dove back into that record and all of the sort of ones that are in that same subgenre of like 90s rock and those they ju it just was like a lot of anger that I related to and I think I felt like I love these songs, but also I want to have songs that are specific to my experience that get out the same kind of anger. And so that was the place that I wrote a lot of them from. So can we expect some whole covers during the live show? So now what I want to know. You can expect a Cranberries cover. Ooh, okay, I'll take that too. I'll okay. take that too. Okay. Well, we were talking a bit offline um, about this as well, but we recently had Samia in the studio, Obsessed. who I know you've known for years. Yes. And she spoke a bit about the the influence from the New York DIY scene and now being in Nashville. Um, can you talk a bit about some of those creative communities you've been a part of and how that has influenced your sound or your creative process, all of the above? Yeah, I think it's hard to always draw a really straight line from like this person influenced me to make songs this way or but just I think being around people that I respect a lot as artists makes me inspired to make music that's like authentic to me. I think something with Samia, for example, is I just feel like in her writing, she sees a lot of beauty around her and she writes about it so specifically and listening to her album that came out last week I've been like okay I want to write about the the love around me and the beautiful things around me too and so I think things like that just in these sort of like tangential ways it comes out the sort of community influence well now we have about half of the record out 
which is crazy. Yeah. So now that you're on the road, these people, all your fans, have sat with this music for a while. So you're kind of seeing them for the first time, maybe knowing all the words to this song. How has that experience been for you? It's really cool. And it just, like, makes me feel more comfortable, I think, during these shows when people are there knowing the words and singing. And I think it like singing these songs creates an opportunity for me to get these emotions out and heal from certain things. And in a, it's just a different kind of thing to try to do that collectively and feels really special. So I feel really lucky to get to do it. Yeah. And I feel like these lyrics really land with everyone. Um, did you really anticipate that happening or I, I guess not? Cause you thought I'm writing this for no one. Yeah. I thought absolutely no one would hear it. So I did not. Well, we love to play it on WNXP. Very much looking forward to the new record. Launch Hill drops April 7th via our friends at Partisan Records. Thank you so much, Sabrina, for being here. Thanks for having me. Thanks.